Ladies and gentlemen, fight fans all around the world, let's talk some boxing. So today we're going to look at placement in boxing. And a lot of times people think of placement offensively, but I'm going to cover both defensively and offensively placement in boxing. Before I do so, let me just go through the other videos that we went through. We looked at positioning and stance in boxing. We looked at pivoting and movement in boxing. We looked at timing in boxing. And now we're going to look at placement. In boxing, you cannot just consider trying to land punches. There are always punches coming back at you, as you can see in this photograph. A guy is throwing a punch. The other guy, he has a stance. He can get hit on the chin if he does not move out the way of the punch or block the punch. He's going to get hit. So we're going to look at placement in boxing. And what you have to understand is in boxing, you're not just looking for openings in your opponent, but you're also looking for the hole to slip past the offense of your opponent. You must be defensively responsible. In other words, I am looking to place myself in a position where my opponent can't hit me, but I can hit them. I'm looking to fit into a slot and see the opening in my opponent and hurt them. So right now you're watching it, Juan Manuel Marquez, how he knocked out Manny Pacquiao. But see, everybody sees his right hand hitting Manny Pacquiao. What they don't see is Ma Marquez slipping Manny Pacquiao's jab. Marquez needs to slip through that hole, that little slot, move out the way of Manny Pacquiao's offense as he's throwing his offense. So he must be defensively responsible and also offensively uh, effective at the same time. Now let's look at placement in a little bit more detail. Placement has a lot to do with angles. It's important that you are accurate, but you're also precise. Now let me make a discrepancy or discriminate between accuracy and precision. Someone can be precise, but not accurate. That is, a precise person is someone who can repeat something over and over again and literally place, if it's punching, place that punch, that punch basically the same place on that person's body over and over again. But that doesn't mean they're accurate. They may be throwing a punch and it repeatedly hits the person's elbows, for instance, if it's a spleen shot or liver shot. So they're precise, but they're not accurate. Now, an accurate person can place that spleen or liver shot exactly on the spleen and liver such that it hurts their opponent every time. That person may be accurate, but they may not be able to do it over and over again and get the same accuracy, which means they're not precise. So in placement, you need to be precise and accurate. And that only comes from immense amounts of repetition. Repetition. And what makes a great boxer and a talented boxer a legend is their repetition. You'll see Manny Pacquiao sparring over and over, doing a number of different combinations through repetition. Now we want to go into the more important details, the meat here. Now if you watch it, Juan Manuel Marquez, look what he does. He slips the punch and then he comes with his lead jab. He also throws a feint, I do believe. Here it is. That's the feint right there. All right, Pacquiao does catch him a little bit on the chin with his straight left, but he's outside of range. It's important to understand, to see that opening, he had to, he had to move out the way of Pacquiao's attack which creates the opening because Pacquiao just opened up by attacking Marquez and counter him through that slot. It's kind of like you're going to go into a tunnel, but the tunnel splits along the middle and you want to just time it just perfectly so that you move out the way of any barricades to the opening of that tunnel. You want to fit into that slot. And at the same time, you maybe want to um, not only fit in there, but you want to reach something in that tunnel. It's kind of like that in boxing. So he's fitting into the space. There's a gap defensively and offensively in Manny Pacquiao's uh, offense and defense. As he throws the offense, Marquez is trying to fit himself 
outside of that offensive maneuver at the same time get inside to land his uh, offense himself so he has to be defensively responsible as Pacquiao is doing that now the only way this happens is because of angles and in boxing uh, it's a three-dimensional thing it's a three-dimensional sport it's in space so when we talk about angles we need to look at the angle of Marquez footwork to Pacquiao's footwork that is, Marquez is probably getting his lead foot outside of Pacquiao's lead foot. And the other thing you have to pay attention to is the angles in space. Now, in this case, Marquez responds to Pacquiao in the horizontal. Okay? Both are in the same horizontal plane. If Marquez was to switch levels, that is, to get lower than Pacquiao or get higher than Pacquiao, then we would have to look at the angle Marquez is throwing his punch, whether it's upward or downward. In this case, he's throwing it in the horizontal so it, it doesn't make a difference both are trading on the same plane all right so angles make a big difference in a fight here again we're looking at Chris Ariola versus uh, I do believe uh, I forgot this Seth Mitchell I think this guy is and in this fight you're gonna see Chris Ariola uh, he's a little bit defensively responsible look at it look look at him it's not the greatest defensive responsibility he has a high guard he's watching throws a jab overhand right here comes Seth Mitchell with a beautiful body shot and Chris Ariola lands the straight overhand right three times, four times, five times. And Seth Mitchell staggers out the way. And that's all she wrote. Now, it's an overhand right. Why didn't he try to hit Seth Mitchell with a, a straight right? Because the overhand right, as you can see here, he catches him with a left hook. And then the overhand right, that staggers Seth Mitchell. Another overhand right, another overhand right. You have to understand, he was able to do that, which is a basic punch, but nonetheless, he was able to do that because Chris Ariola threw a jab. And that opened up Seth Mitchell for the overhand right. It, it's, not, it's not the greatest angle work in the world, but it's important to see that it's an overhand right to get over his shoulder. Okay, there it is again. There it is again. There it is again. So it's at an angle. It's on an outside angle coming outside of Seth Mitchell's field of vision, and then it's coming down like a hammerhead. That's what knocks out Seth Mitchell. Now, here again, we see Manny Pacquiao. Again, Marquez this time, he's coming in, his placement slips the punch, and he comes in at an angle, this time at an angle to the horizontal. He's coming in at an angle to the horizontal. He slips the punch at another angle, and he rocks the other way and lands an overhand right, and a left punch to the, to the liver. There it is again. Up, down, up. Okay, so he's actually at probably 30 to 45 degrees to the horizontal when he throws those punches. He slips one way, so he slips about 15 degrees in one direction, and he slips back the other direction like a boat. So he slips there, and then he goes boom, boom, and he comes on the inside. Okay? Again, this is something that has been practiced over and over again to get precision and accuracy. Here we see uh, Mikey Garcia. This is a pull counter. All right, the Puerto Rican guy throws the jab. Mikey Garcia slips the jab and he's coming through those holes. We call them holes because when somebody throws an offensive punch, they actually create a hole and Garcia is maneuvering around the punch to get to the holes. Watch it again. Pull counter, throws the jab, he goes overhand. Overhand means he's going over the jab. He misses, goes under, leaping left hook at an angle. Now the angle in this case is to the vertical. It's a circular punch, the left hook. He knocks with the neck hook to get away his guard. As he throws the jab, he counters him with a pull counter, overhand pull counter. But always, the placement is defensively and offensively. He's moving around. You see, he was bobbing and weaving. He was moving around the punches to get to the holes. You understand? So placement is not just about offense. It's also about placing your head and your body defensively outside of the line of fire to get to the punches that you want to get to. And that takes a lot of training and practice, okay?
So I hope this was educational to you guys in terms of placement. There's a, I'm, I'm very superficially covering it. Uh, there's a lot to angles in boxing, a lot about angles in boxing. There's a lot of things you need to know. But for now, I hope that this provided some education. You remember, it's not just about placement of punches. You can know all the placement of punches, but you don't have the head movement and the body movement to maneuver away from your opponent or block your opponent's punches. It doesn't really matter. Placement is both a defensive thing and an offensive thing at the same time. You guys have a great day.